the leaves are falling, a crisp breeze is blowing, and every company to sell drinks and desserts is spamming promotions about pumpkin spice. You know what that means. It's fall! For me, that also means it's time to sit down with my friends and watch one of my favorite series of all time, Over the Garden Wall. Me and my friends have been having a yearly Over the Garden Wall watch party for roughly the past five years. But in the past, the emphasis has been more on watch rather than party. We got together, probably bought some pizza, and that was about it. However, this year, I wanted to do something different. A few months ago while I was scrolling, I saw a video about the company Fork and Film and their multi-course eating experience, where you ate the food that was themed around scenes from the movie Ratatouille. I was in love. I mean, I love food. I love animated movies. It's a match made in heaven. Except that I don't live in any of the cities they're located in. And even if I did, my funds are low. So what's a broke gal to do? Make the experience at home, but with an over the garden wall twist. As a very unfancy person, this would be my first multi-course meal experience. So it was time to research. I found out that for multi-course meals, there's generally a vague expected order. For a four course meal like I would be doing, this would mean appetizer, soup, main course, then dessert. Every episode in the series is roughly 11 minutes long, so I decided to do a meal every two to three episodes, giving everyone 20 to 30 minutes to eat each course. With that in mind, it was time to make my menu. For those uninitiated, Over the Garden Wall is a beautiful mini-series about two brothers on a journey through an unusual land called the Unknown. It is thoughtfully crafted from its visuals, to its story, to its score that is full of certified bangers. I'm choosing my words carefully here because if you've never seen the series, I really don't want to spoil it for you. But this is as far as I can keep the video spoiler free. The show only has two hours of total runtime and is truly one of the greatest pieces of media I've ever experienced. So please go watch it and then come back here when you're done. Final spoil warning, three, two, one. Our appetizer would take place during the first two episodes, The Old Grist Mill and Hard Times at the Huskin Bee. The most obvious answer in The Old Grist Mill would be to include candy from Greg's Candy Trail, but for the first course, I really didn't want to make my friends queasy by giving them a bunch of sugar out the gate. Instead, I wanted to focus on the other thing that this horrifying dog monster ate. A turtle. So I made milk bread turtles with a little bit of food coloring to turn them black. With a bread as a base, I thought it would be best that we had a nice cheese ball spread for flavoring. To fit the theming of Hard Times the Husk and Bee, we made one pumpkin shaped and one skull shaped. I also decided to include some deviled eggs with a chive to make them look like pumpkins. And some cherry tomatoes, because I just like cherry tomatoes. That's really it. <laughs> Next course is soup, which would be taking inspiration from episode 3, School Town Follies. Potatoes and molasses is easily the most iconic food in the show. Which is why with a heavy heart I say... I didn't make it. I know, I know. But le let me explain. Of course it was my first thought to include potatoes and molasses in this meal. That is until I started looking up recipes online. These recipes were treating this as a sweet dish rather than a savory one. Molasses is a byproduct of the sugar making process, and brown sugar is just granulated sugar mixed with molasses. With that in mind, a lot of these recipes were making some form of brown sugar... sweet mashed potatoes? I could maybe try that for myself at some point, but there were people coming to this event who were uninitiated to the series, and especially not initiated to the idea of sweet mashed potatoes. Instead, I kept the potato dish savory, and my hubby made a delicious soup with potatoes, Italian sausage, bacon, and chives. It's not lore accurate, but in my opinion, it's way more appetizing. That takes us all the way to episode 6 for the inspiration of the main course. Lullaby in Frogland means this is going to be one froggy-themed main course. 
I decided to make some BLTs with frog buns for bread. They turned out so cute and so wonky. Also, here, of course, is the mandatory cross section. Ooh. To go along with the sandwich, I made a side inspired by episode 7. The ringing of the bell mac and cheese. Technically not mac, it's actually orchetta to get the bell shape. Though I've been told this is less of a bell and more of a hat shape. I guess that means my plans are just already made for the One Piece live action season 2 watch party. Finally, we're at the last two episodes, and that means dessert. Themed food-wise, dessert is by far the easiest. After all the pumpkin-themed visuals at the beginning, it would be very sad to not include some actually pumpkin-flavored treats. So I started with making some pumpkin-shaped pumpkin hand pies. These last two episodes also included another iconic food from the series. Here, eat some dirt. <clears throat> So I made dirt cups, so we can finally follow Beatrice's mom's advice. This also included some gravestones to make it a combo reference with the graveyard scene. I wanted to make some Edelwood leaf cookies, but sadly I didn't have any leaf-shaped cookie cutters on hand. So instead, we made some Beatrice sugar cookies. Ignore that the cookie cutter is totally a duck, and that when iced with blue icing, it just looks like social media branding. It's a bluebird. It's Beatrice. She's a bluebird. It's fine. Finally, I wanted to recreate the Rock Facts rock. It's a rock fact! So we made a Midwest classic. Buckeyes. For those of you who don't know what Buckeyes are, they are chocolate-covered peanut butter balls. So they're basically like if Reese's were less dry and crumbly on the inside. With those made, we just needed to pipe on the faces. And they turned out beautiful. Me, my friend, and my hubby started making all this food three days before the party. And I gotta say, sitting down with my friends, eating amazing food, and enjoying one of the most well-crafted pieces of media I've ever seen was so rewarding at the end of all of this. Update on the friends who had been seeing this for the first time, it brought them to tears, and they had ordered their own DVD copy before the showing was even over, so definitely a successful introduction. This was an all-around amazing experience, and I'm so excited to do it again. After me and my wallet have recovered.